Now he goes on and he says, first of all, there's something that I want to make very clear here. This throne upon which God sets is a throne of sovereignty. It demonstrates His power and His rule over everything. But you also need to understand that this throne upon which God sets is a judgment throne. In Romans chapter 14, it's called the judgment throne of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it's called the judgment throne of Christ. It is very, very interesting in our text here that this, this word in 2 Corinthians, referring to the judgment throne of Christ, is the word bema. And it says that when Christ was being judged by Pilate, he stood before the Bema, the throne, the judgment seat of Pilate. But isn't it an amazing thing that here everything is reversed. Now Pilate will stand before the judgment throne of Christ. How do you think he will feel on that day? When he treated Christ as though he were nothing. He used Christ to barter with Herod. He pawned around Christ as though he were nothing. And now Pilate will stand before Christ. And you say, oh poor Pilate. No, my friend. Poor you. Because maybe you have done the same. You have judged Christ. You've heard the gospel over and over. But you've pawned him off. You've rejected him. Or you've taken Christ to yourself sort of in a nonchalant fashion. Just enough Jesus to make you religious. But you don't understand. In the way you view Jesus right now, you are judging him. In the way you serve Jesus, you are judging him. It's not just about disobedience. It's the way you look at Christ and the way you treat Christ. It goes on. This throne is a great throne. The word that's used in Greek language is megas, in which we, word we get mega. It means something great. It, the word can be translated as appearance, dimensions, mass, weight, compass, extent, strength, rank, eminence, esteem, virtue, authority, and power. Everything summed up in the word greatness is found in the throne of our God and the judgment throne before which you will stand. This greatness is also manifested in the fact that, well, the footstool of this thing, the footstool, is the very earth. Listen to what the scriptures say. Isaiah says, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. There has never been a king on the face of the earth that has owned an entire continent and kept it. Great kings before whom we would tremble and most of the world has trembled, but they didn't even own a part of the earth. And yet this king before, you, before whom you will stand, this king who will judge you, is so great, his throne, that he puts his feet on this planet. He sets his feet here. Then how great is his power? How great is his authority? How great is this one before whom you will stand? Another thing that tells us about the greatness of this throne is this. Now John comes into this vision. I want you to think about this. John comes into this vision and he says, I saw a throne. But don't you know that there was almost an infinite number of humanity standing there before the throne? A sea, oceans of men, as far as the eye could see. But John doesn't notice any of them. Do you see that? He doesn't notice them at all. Because the one on that throne is so great, it makes everyone else disappear. Totally and completely disappear. Isn't it amazing how much value man places on man? And how important we are to each other. But when God fully and finally reveals Himself, all of us totally and completely disappear. This has so many. I mean, there's, there's books just on this word. You imagine you struggle with pride. You, you need a view of the throne of God. And all pride dissipates and disappears. Another thing about this throne that I want you to see, it is great because of the one who sits upon it. 
Listen to what Scripture says. It says, He is the I Am, the Alpha and Omega, the Ancient of Days, the Eternal God, the Invisible God, the Blessed God, the Mighty One, the Holy One, the Righteous God, the God of Gods, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Possessor of Heaven and Earth, the Blessed and Only Sovereign, the Lawgiver, the Judge of all the Earth. He who is to be feared, the Bible says. He who is to be feared. Nebuchadnezzar said this, But at the end of that period, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, but He does according to His will in the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth. And no one can ward off his hand or say to him, What have you done? This is the God of the Bible. One of the reasons why I'm preaching this is the very thing that happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He said, I looked toward heaven and my reason returned to me. Those of you who possibly do not know the Lord, you, all you look at is the earth. It's your standard, the basis upon which you judge everything else. You need to look to heaven so that your reason might return to you. You need to look toward eternal things and realize what is happening. Do you think I would give my life for poetry? This is not poetry. This is reality. This is what is going to happen. It is the most certain thing that is going to happen. And those of us who are believers, yes, our hearts are renewed. Yes, we've been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, but never forget that Christianity is a process of sanctification. You can boast all day long about having a true gospel, and I'm very proud that you do, but you can still be mesmerized by this world, taken off course, because you just look at the things of this world that sparkle. Things so important to man today. You need to look to heaven. You need to see a throne. You need to see reality. That reason might return to you. It goes on and it says that the throne is white. It's a white throne. When you have to speak about the righteousness of God, you are left undone. There, just, there aren't any words in the human language. First of all, the human mind can't comprehend it. And if it could comprehend it, it couldn't communicate it because our language is not strong enough. The blazing white brilliance of God's righteousness that not even angels can stand before it without covering themselves. And those angels that do stand in His presence, the seraphs called in Hebrew, the burning ones, they're not burning by their own fire. They're just a reflection of this glorious, horrible, magnificent God and His righteousness. That throne that's going to judge you is white. Not a spot not a blemish, it's not off-colored, no deals will be made with you, you will be judged by the pure, white, hot, holy character of God.